Others love everyone and welcome. Today we're going to read Romans chapter 7. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin, by the commandment, might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then it is no more that I, I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present within me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. I hope that edifies and blesses each and every one of you who listen to it. Let's do a little review. Paul starts out in verse 1, saying, Don't you realize, brothers, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives? 
I was going to try to get into describing being born again again in this chapter and contrasting flesh and the spirit. So as long as our flesh lives, law and sin has dominion over it. But he goes on to say, and he talks about how a woman, just like a woman who's married to a man, they're bound by law as husband and wife until the man dies. And if the man dies, she's free to remarry. But if she remarries before the man dies, then she's an adulteress. But sort of the same contrast. We are, we're married to sin, sort of. We are, we're bound by the law to sin because of the original sin, because of the transgression. So, that's what he's contrasting. And it's the same as a woman and a man being married. They're bound by law. They, are, they can't remarry. As long as the husband is alive, the woman can't remarry or she's an adulteress. But if he dies, she's free to marry. So, and that's the symbolism. As he, he says in verses 4, 5, and 6, Therefore, my brethren, you've become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Again, like the last chapter, we are baptized where the old man is crucified he is buried that way we can marry another we can marry the one who is raised from the dead so we can bring forth good fruit to god so just as a wife is bound to her husband until he dies we were basically bound to sin to the law until we died so Spiritually, we must die. We must be born again by the Spirit. That's what it's all about. We must be buried with Christ. We must be resurrected as a new creation. Now, none of that is flesh at the moment. We're still on the earth. We still got this flesh. Our flesh isn't born again yet. Our flesh isn't resurrected. Our flesh is still the same old man. It's still the flesh. That's why we war with it constantly. But our mind, our spirit, must be renewed. That's why we're told to take thoughts captive. That's why we're told to renew our mind. That's our spirit. We must, our spirit must die and be born again. That's what's symbolized by the death of Christ, with the death, dying with Christ and being raised again. That's, that's, it's our spirit man, our spirit body, if you will, or spirit mind, whatever you want. It's our spirit man. Our flesh is our flesh. We're going to war with it till we die. Then when the flesh truly dies and is put in the ground, then we'll be given new bodies, as Jesus promises. We'll be glorified. It's a whole different thing. And that's what Paul is symbolizing in this chapter. He's trying to, to get us to wrap our mind around the flesh and the spirit. And that's, and that's what being born again is. We're born again in spirit. Our spirit, man, is renewed. We are born again. Because when we were in the flesh, it says, the sin, which the law pointed out, works in our members. I mean, we desire sinful things. That's what our flesh does. That's the way it is. The law points out sin. Don't lust. We lust. You know? Don't lie, we lie. Don't steal, we steal. Unfortunately, don't kill, some of us kill. You know, it, The law points out the sin, but our flesh craves it. it. It's just, it's nature. But now, we're delivered from the law. When we die, that being dead, we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. So now it isn't about obeying the law, although we do, but it, it isn't about the letter. It's about the spirit. It's about being guided by the spirit. It's, it isn't about the law. It's way beyond the law. Just like Jesus says, you say, don't have sex with a woman out of wedlock or you commit adultery. I'm telling you, even, even if you look at her 
even think about having sex when they're out of wedlock. You've committed adultery. It's way beyond the law. <laughs> the spirit, man, the spirit. Yes. It's a whole different thing. That's why the, we're dead to the law. Not that we don't agree with the law. Not that we think the law was bad. In fact, we're going to get into how great the law is and how good the law is. But it's beyond the law. <laughs> Way beyond the law. The law says thou shalt not cure. Jesus said, I tell you, even if you look at a man with hate, you've already killed him. It's it's a whole different walk. It's a whole different journey. It's, it's not that we discard the law. It's that we go beyond the law, just as Jesus taught us. Or, or we try our spirit. Our spirit is is willing, but her flesh is weak, as we'll see. So what do we say then? Is the law sin? No, the law was not sin. There was nothing wrong with the law. The law was perfect. The law was true. But, and without the law, we would never have known sin. But by the law, now we know sin, because like you said, I wouldn't have known lust except the law told me I shouldn't covet. When the law said I shouldn't covet, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm coveting. I lust. I mean, the law points out sin. The law itself is not sin. No, goodness, no. The law is perfect. The law is good. Just like Jesus said, the law is good. The law is nothing wrong with the law. Sin is what's wrong. And that's what he goes on to say here, but we're going to go on down. We know, down to verse 14 and on, we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, and I'm sold under sin. So again, you, you, we are bound under sin. Our carnality, our, our flesh, is sold under sin. But we know the law is spiritual. I'm carnal, sold under sin. That's just the way it is. That's what we were born into. And because of that, he says, that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Basically saying, I can't do what I want to do. I can't do what I know's right. I seem to always do what I know's wrong. He says, and if I do that which I would not, if I keep doing what's wrong, that proves that the laws, I'm consenting to the laws good. In other words, the law is telling me don't steal. When I steal, I know it's wrong. That tells me the law is good. The law is correct. You should not steal. There's nothing wrong with the law. You shouldn't steal. What's wrong is stealing. So when we do what we don't want to do, when we know we shouldn't be stealing, when we know we shouldn't be whatever, we shouldn't be looking at that woman with lust, we shouldn't be... Uh, craving the neighbor's car, we sh and whatever it is. When we know that's wrong, that just proves how we're saying the law is good. We're not saying there's anything wrong with the law when we say we're, we, we, the law is done away with. We're not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's perfectly good. It's absolutely true. It points out our sin. It shows us where our flesh is weak. It shows us how much and why we need our Savior. And it says, well, then if I keep doing what's wrong, although I know I don't want to, if I truly, truly don't want to, if my spirit is grieved every time I slip, then I know it isn't me that's doing it. But it's the sin in me that's doing it. It's that carnal nature. It's that old man, that carcass that we're still trapped in that flesh that's doing it. That doesn't give an, ex as an excuse to do it, as we said in the last chapter. But when you're truly born again, you grieve every time you slip. Not that you never slip. Because we're stuck in the flesh. That's what this is about. That's what Paul is saying here. He says, now then it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, 
There's no good thing. Now, important to notice here that he points out, I know that in me that is in my flesh. There's no good thing. In this fleshly body and in my flesh, in my human nature, there is no good thing. It's a, it, it's a sin nature we was born into. Our, our nature is sinful, our flesh. But he's not saying there's no good thing in me at all, which a lot of people might try to twist up. It's, well, you can't help but sinning because in you there's no good thing. No, no, no. In your flesh, there's no good thing. Let's make sure we don't twist our scriptures or take them out of context to make them say what we want. The Holy Spirit is also in us, and that's a very, very good thing. So there is good thing in you. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But in our flesh, there is no good thing. Nothing. No good thing in our flesh. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. See, the will is there. I know what's good. I know what the Spirit is 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 wanting me to do, is guiding me to do. How to perform it, that's, that's my problem. That's the flesh's problem. Her flesh don't want to perform it. Her flesh wants to do the opposite. Her flesh likes the sins it likes. Don't want to give them up. He says, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that's what I do. Again, he keeps, you know, he keeps trying to get the point across. I keep doing what I don't want to do. I keep doing what I know is evil. Why? If I do what I don't want to do, again, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So he keeps trying to make you understand. Yes, yes, you will slip, but don't let it. Don't let the enemy use it to oppress you and depress you and tell you how horrible you are and how you fail. That's our flesh. That isn't us. If you're born again, if you truly are striving to follow the spirit, that's the flesh. That's the evil in you. That's the flesh. That's not your spirit man. Your spirit man is striving. The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. His grace is sufficient. Don't ever forget that. He says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. There, there it is. He sums it up. When I really want to do good, when I, when I strive so hard to obey the Spirit, evil is right there beside me. In fact, it's more than beside me. It's, it is me. It's present with me. That sin nature, that flesh, it's right there. So I have to battle that evil. I have to resist, as it says. And we can, through that power of the good that is in us, the Holy Spirit. He says, for I delight in the law of God. After the inward man, the spirit man, the inward man. I delight after the law of God. It's what I want to do more than anything in my life. I want to obey the Father. I delight after the law of God in my inward man. But, unfortunately, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity, the law of sin, which is in my members. So again, yes, although my spirit man, my inner man, my born again man loves and delights in the law of God and wants nothing more to perform it, there is also the fleshly man, the sinful man, who wants nothing more than to not <laughs> perform it. That is the struggle that we all face if we're born again. The battle of the mind, if you would, or the inward man, I would, whatever earthly terms you want to try to use to describe spiritual things. The battle of the spirit. He says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Thank goodness we know who delivers us. 
this wretched man that I was. No wretched indeed. We know who delivered us from the body of this death. And I thank God, as he says, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Even though with the flesh, it serves the law of sin. So I know in my heart of hearts, and that's why it says, Father knows your heart. Don't worry about what man says, what man tries to tell you, how false, how false far short you're coming. Don't worry about what the enemy says. Your heart of hearts. Thank the Father through his Son, our Savior and our Lord, that we now have the ability, thanks to the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit with our mind, to serve the law of God, to follow after Jesus Christ, to serve the Father, and do his will. Even though we battle constantly and daily, but the flesh wants nothing more than to serve the law of sin. And that's basically what Paul is trying to get across in this chapter. Don't forget to pray for the children, our fellow brothers and sisters around the world, and all those who are still lost in the darkness so that they too could see the light. May our Father bless you. May he keep you. May his grace shine upon you. Give you peace. We'll see you next time.